Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this new live stream. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, as I did last week, I'm going to pull the live from another device. I'm going to just use my phone just to make sure that I see when people join and uh, all of the comments, really. So I'm going to mute this on my phone. And hopefully this thing should work. Last week it worked fine. Um, I'm going to be waiting for a few people to join first. Yeah, my phone just dropped. Okay, so that I can read the comments on my left in case I miss uh, I miss some of them here on YouTube. Okay, welcome to everybody who's joining. We've got the nylon string guitar today, so this is a Yamaha uh, classical guitar. Okay, um, the reason why I've got this is because today's live is about Brazilian guitar. Okay, and uh, Brazilian guitar means that you are going to uh, play most of the times so you, sh you should play at least you know classical uh, classical guitars with nylon strings but obviously if you don't own a, a nylon string guitar feel free to apply everything we'll be saying today um, to the acoustic guitar okay to the steel strings feel free to try on both really uh, it's up to you so you choose what's best for you uh, if you are more into the classic sounds of the Brazilian music you're probably more familiar with, you know, listening to the sound of the nylon strings. Okay, whatever you want to use tonight uh, for your practice, if you do have a guitar uh, around you, you can grab it and practice with me. Um, basically, you, you just need to make sure that you play finger picking. Okay, you, potentially you could try this even on electric guitar, but you know, if you have an acoustic instrument, it's usually it's usually better. Okay, uh, I see that some people are joining. So if you are joining tonight, uh, feel free to say hi, leave a comment, and uh, tell me where you're from. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody is doing fine. We are continuing this uh, series of live streamings across um, different different platforms, different social media, um, to make sure that people stay entertained while they're home. And you know, if you, if you play guitar, you can always practice with me and learn uh, something new, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So um, I recently I recently uploaded a couple of videos on uh, Brazilian music here on this channel, this YouTube channel. Um, the the first one was on how to play a song. The the song was one of the classics of the bossa nova, the Brazilian guitar, which is uh, the Girl from Ipanema or Garota de Ipanema uh, by Antonio Carlos Jobim. And uh, the other one was just a Brazilian groove noodling around one chord, really, trying to introduce some of the cliches of um, some of the cliches of the Brazilian music. Hi, Lia. And thanks for your comment. Thanks for your comment. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically what uh, what I uploaded, and hopefully you know they are helpful. And you know if you if you never played. A Brazilian guitar before you can maybe start from those two videos um, a few months ago I think a few months ago I actually uploaded my very first uh, Brazilian guitar uh, tutorial online which was in general you know how to understand the basics of the Brazilian guitar the basics of the bossa nova obviously if you do know something about jazz guitar so if you know chords like this or this maybe with the, you know with the extensions or if you know, yeah, the extended chord, all this kind of stuff, you should be, you know, able to pick up uh, everything I, I talk about uh, in those videos. But you know, um, what I really, what I really uh, think about is that most of the times when you when you record a video, you think like I want to be short in these videos, so uh, I never got the chance to go too deep into the cliches and the patterns of the Brazilian guitar. That's why I'm doing this live stream. So hopefully if you're interested in finger style guitar, if you're interested in acoustic guitar, classical guitar, there's a nylon string again, uh, and Brazilian music in general or jazz in general, uh, you might find this live stream interesting, okay? Now guys, um, let's start from a little example. This example is the pattern that I was playing uh, on that video that I mentioned, okay? And it was pretty much something like...
okay pretty much like this i'm just gonna move now my microphone a little closer i want to make sure that you can hear nice and clear the sound of the nylon strings uh, basically because you know the nylon strings usually sound a little quieter compared to the steel string to the acoustic guitar so i just want to make sure that everything is fine please le let me know in the comments if you struggle to hear either the guitar or my voice okay um, so basically what was i playing here this is already an interesting example to understand some of the cliches that would be uh, talking about tonight so basically uh, as i said i was just noodling around this chord which is literally just an a major okay um so i know that you don't have the dots to see here on my fret but so it might be a little tricky to see what chord i'm playing but i can tell you this fret seven and this fret six therefore you can maybe think of an a major triad but i'm not even playing the fifth because i already got it here uh, when i played the first string so having the second string open as well, that means that I'm playing the B, and that means that I'm playing the ninth, okay? That's an A at ninth, because I'm just playing the open B, nice and simple. Then, you know, I was literally moving here only one note. I don't know if you noticed that, but what I play, and this, uh, I can say the bottom strings, obviously the open strings are staying there, this note is staying there as well. So what am I, what am I really moving? I'm literally just moving stuff on the D string. I'm moving the A that I mentioned before, fret seven on the D string, down to a G sharp, fret six, down to an F sharp, fret four, and back to the G sharp, okay? So that means that your A becomes, you know, at nine we said, we start with that, but then I also get the major seventh here, so that becomes basically an A major uh, nine, okay? So an A major seven adding the nine, okay? But then I move this major seven down here to the F sharp, we said, which is the sixth. Therefore, this chord is A six nine. Okay, uh, the six nine chords are basically one of the most uh, important chords that you can find really when you play Brazilian music. Okay, so you do have the major third and you do have the major sixth. Okay, you also have the ninth. That, that's why six nine. Um, you might be more familiar with it in this shape. So if you're used to hear uh, Brazilian music, these are all shapes that you might find. Oof, sorry for that. I think you got like a little bump because I hit uh, the microphone. Um, so if you're used to, you know, this kind of sound, every time that you hear that kind of sound, you're really doing a six nine chord. Now, when you play the six nine chord, let, let's let's talk about it in the key of C, right? Uh, you play the root, you play the major third, so that's why it's a major chord. Then you play the sixth, and you play the ninth. There is no seventh when you talk about six nine chords, because the sixth is kind of like replaces the seventh. So you should always think like, um, I'm actually thinking of a C major seven, right? Uh, which most of you know, this can be made into a C major nine, just basically adding the ninth here and dropping the fifth, so this is on a mid five. But then what I do, if I replace the major seven with the sixth, I actually got the position that I showed you, right? So this is root, major third, major sixth, major nine. Okay, so that's why six nine. Uh, it's true that together with replacing the seventh with the sixth, we are also dropping the fifth, so we call this on mid five. But that fifth that you are dropping, you can always add it on the bass. And this is one, maybe the first real cliche we should talk about when we play Brazilian guitar, okay? So very often what, what happens is that when you play a chord, you move the bass, you move the bass note, the lowest sound that you can hear from the root note to the fifth and vice versa, okay? Like... I'm sure that you're used to this kind of uh, bass lines. So what you can do, you can just do this kind of thing, where you start plucking, you know, the four, uh, the four notes of your six, six, nine, and then you avoid playing the root note because you replace it with a fifth on the bass. The chord is still the C six nine, but you are alternating the root note and the and the perfect fifth on the bass. So if we are in the key of C, we're talking about the C note and the G note here. Okay, I keep seeing people uh, joining this. Uh, live stream thanks for tuning in uh tonight live stream first of all and feel free to say hi let me know where you're from uh if you have any questions guys really like any questions you you might have while i'm live here just use the comment box 
should be on your right hand side, I believe. Uh, and if everything works fine, I should be able to see the comments in real time and maybe answer them. Or if you're watching the uh, replay of this one, um, basically what we're doing tonight, we are going to go through the patterns and the basics, but also the cliches of the Brazilian guitar. Okay, trying to learn uh, why the Brazilian guitar is so unique and why as soon as you play something like... Which is literally one chord, you can already picture in your mind, hopefully, you can already picture in your mind what kind of style that is and uh, what area of the world that recalls in your mind, okay? Which is hopefully South America and in particular Brazil, okay? Let me also know, guys, if there is any Brazilian uh, viewer <laughs> to this live stream, uh, I would like to have an interaction with somebody from Brazil. So I also put a green in the back to create a sort of gold and green to recall the Brazilian flag, okay? So, um, yeah, so the first cliche that we introduced was this one. Every time, literally every time you're playing a chord into a Brazilian song or rhythm, you can always try to see how it sounds when you put the fifth on the bass. The only one you need to be careful with is the half diminished chord, okay? Because this chord here that you might find in a simple two, five, one minor like this, This one has the diminished fifth here, this kind of trite and this kind of um, dissonance that you get here. And, and basically, if you put that on the bass, it doesn't sound great. I mean, it does, but I, I usually play it as a, as a walking bass line, okay? Like this. Okay. Okay, that's what I played there. Uh, there's a question from Leah, which says, is there a connection between Bossa Nova and what you are playing, please? Yes, absolutely. So when you say Brazilian guitar or Brazilian music, you really re refer most of the times to Bossa Nova, okay? Uh, the reason why you refer to Bossa Nova is because Bossa Nova is this style which mixes up um, the rhythm of Brazilian popular music. Think about samba. I play some samba now, uh, but even the one that I was playing is really a style of samba. It's called batucada um, with the jazz harmony. So the sounds of the American jazz uh, that you can think of in the 60s of the previous century. Uh, so when you put that all together, the style that you create is called bossa nova. It's, and the reason why it's called bossa nova is because in the 60s, uh, that was a new style. That's why nova, which means uh, new in Brazilian, in Portuguese. Okay. So think of collaborations like uh, the one between uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim, who's the uh, composer for The Girl from Ipanema, and artists like Frank Sinatra or Ella Fitzgerald. So all of the great, great singers of the jazz era of the 60s, really, the 50s and the 60s, you know. Uh, and they created incredible songs even together, like they wrote stuff together and... That music is just magic, right? But, you know, when you talk about Brazilian guitar, you, you should really have pretty much a, a, an idea that it's not only bossa nova, but it definitely includes bossa nova, okay? Uh, so when I play something like that, the vibe is quite jazzy, so you can definitely tell this is bossa nova because the chords that I'm playing, very jazzy, but the rhythm is definitely the traditional Brazilian rhythm, okay? But... Uh, Brazilian guitar and Brazilian music also means other genres, like for example, samba. Samba is obviously the most important one. Uh, samba has many sub styles, okay? Like the one that I was playing before. This one is called batucada, and it comes from, you know, a specific sound of percussive instruments, uh, which I believe is called repnique. Um, which is basically all of these parts that you have. Even during the carnival in Brazil, you can see all of these people in the streets playing percussions and playing instruments. And, and when you play a harmonic instrument like the guitar, you try to get, you know, basics of the harmony that they are playing, but also you want to have a percussive role. 
And that's why you try to imitate these percussions, okay? Uh, there are also other styles like partito alto, alto, for example, which is another thing, that partido alto, which is another thing that you can check out as well. Um, there are the, the choros. Uh, the choros are maybe closer, in a way, closer to the classical guitar because in Brazil, there is also an incredible tradition of classical guitar, right? One of the greatest classical guitar composers who was Eito Villalobos uh, is a Brazilian guy, right? And he lived in the first half of the 20th century. So that means basically a huge part of the classical guitar repertoire uh, actually comes from Brazil. You know, even, even the classical guitar, like the proper classical stuff, also comes from Brazil as well, in a part, okay? Most of it obviously comes from Spain, from Italy, uh, from Germany as well. But that means that in Brazil, there is a huge tradition of guitar. And you can check out so many incredible guitarists. There are uh, many guitarists who also experiment a lot, okay? Uh, you might find people playing, for example, with seven string nylon, uh, seven nylon string guitars. So that means that you're going to have a seven string on the bass, which is going to be tuned to a B. You know, it, it happens to see incredible, incredible stuff really in Brazilian. Uh, guitar and really love it. It's a style that I love. And again, I find that if you do if you do know the basics of the jazz guitar, if you are into jazz music in general, uh, this is definitely a style that I would suggest you to uh, approach and learn. Uh, there is so much that you can learn from it. Okay. So yeah, uh, this one was sort of batucada. Also, let's keep in mind, and again, let's talk about other cliches of Brazilian music. Uh, the Brazilian music, especially samba, or everything that comes from samba, is usually played quite fast. So rather than playing, you know, these grubas, this way, you should actually play... Uh, uh. Giacomo, how are you doing? Okay, which is way quicker, and this is the way Brazilian music is usually played, okay, a little, a little quicker. Um, now, this also gives me the chance to talk about the time signature. So when you play something like that, you might think, oh, maybe the time signature, it's just a simple 4-4-1, four, four, two, three, four, change. But usually, I must say, if you dip uh, into the Brazilian tradition, you might find out that most of the times you actually count all this in two, four, okay, for a number of reasons. We could talk about why you should count this in two, four and not in four, four, but it's definitely gonna be too long. Um, what I want to say is that if you count in two, four, you basically count one, two, one, two. So you basically count only two beats per bar, in a way, it's the same as the, of the 4-4, four, four, but the musical phrase that you use uh, is different. Mm. In terms of rhythm subdivisions, most of the times we are in 16th. Okay, so what I count here is... How do I count this 2-4 bar? 1 E and R to E and R. Okay, this kind of way. So, cliches that we uh, named so far are obviously the little game that you play with the 5th on the bass, the speed, the 2-4 time signature, uh, the fact that you use jazz chords, basically, so you need to get into your jazz chops, okay? Mm, but also, another thing that you might have seen is that I play a lot of percussion, like... like okay, like... This kind of thing, which recurs a lot when you play fingerstyle guitar in general, even on the acoustic guitar, it kind of recalls percussive instruments as well. You might simply think about the snare into the drum kit. Uh, so basically the, the two and the four of the normal 4-4 four, four bar, or just the two, if you're thinking about a 2-4 bar, are played this way, you know. So these are things that you should keep in account. Okay. Uh, then the little movements that you do within the same voicing, within the same chord, okay? Like, for example, when you think about the A major that I was playing before, and I was moving one line only in between, okay? But then um, the other things are 
a little bit more complicated. I will, I will name only one now, which is going to be the anticipation. The anticipation is uh, something that I talked about even in my previous videos of Brazilian guitar. It's basically when rather than going on the downbeat with, for example, the following bass note or the following chord, you actually play it a little earlier and that way you anticipate uh, that chord which is coming. And uh, you, you, are, you can anticipate it either by one octave or one sixteenth note, okay? So, for example, here where I was playing that kind of upper part of the chord, it's played on the last sixteenth before I get into the next bar. One, E, and R, two, E, and R, on the R, basically on the fourth sixteenth of that beat. And then when I play the following bass, that's the actual one, okay? Uh, the same thing could happen with the bass, and it does happen with the bass in the second bar. This bass, which is the fifth of the chord that I'm playing, uh, it happens to be again on the fourth sixteenth. So one E and a two E and a one E and a the A of the first beat of the following bar, okay? Uh, this happens even when you play tunes. We uh, talked about Ge from Ipanema. When you play... That kind of chord in between the G minus seven and the F major seven, this is a G seven flat five. You actually play the upper part of it before you play the bass, therefore you're playing again a 16th note anticipation, okay, like... And again, alright, this is the slow version, obviously, think about it this way, like... experiment these kind of stuff you guys just start with a simple chord like a minor nine that's a c minor nine beautiful um jazzy and brazilian chord messing around with the fifth then you move it one fourth higher like if you want to play an f minor nine same voicing like you can see that sometimes i'm plucking all of the strings together Sometimes I'm plucking only the upper part, and some other times I'm just moving the bass line, right? Okay, I hope this is clear. I'm not 100% sure about the quality of the audio and the video synchronization in this live stream, but you know, hopefully you you get the you get the idea. Then the last thing I want to talk about for this. Uh, live stream on Brazilian guitar is the concept, it's another concept similar to the uh, anticipation really, and it connects still to what you really do in terms of cliches on the uh, Brazilian guitar, which is the uh, mirrored pattern. What does it mean? That if you do have a 2-4 bar, which goes for the first chord, or maybe even just staying uh, on the same chord, oh thanks for the feedback Leah, Connection is okay, great, because I was, you know, wondering whether you can actually get a nice audio and video from this. Um, so what I was saying is that even if you stay on one chord, but you do play two bars of two, four, very often what happens is that when you play in the second beat, let's put it this way, you play the first beat, then you play the second beat with a different rhythm. In the following bar, you play the other way around. So what you played on the second beat of the first bar now becomes the first beat of the second bar. And what you played at the beginning as the first beat of the first bar becomes now the second beat, second bar, okay? I'll show you an example. It's actually easier to see when I played rather than following when I just say it. So it's gonna be like, that's the first beat. This is the second. Now in the second bar, I start from this kind of pattern. Okay, with the dun, 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 eighth note, sorry, sixteenth note, eighth note, eight and sixteenth again, syncopation basically. So again, first, second, the first of the second bar, like the second that I just played, and then the fourth beat that I played, so the second of the second bar, like the first one. Okay, so if I play two eighth notes, then syncopation, then I play the syncopation to start with, and then the two eighth notes. 
obviously all this, including the other uh, cliches. You know, the walking bass line. This kind of stuff, okay? Hope that makes sense. Uh, you can also apply to this uh, more anticipation. You know, which feels like I need to move more, right? The anticipations, the syncopations really give you a lot of movement. And that's why, you know, something I find really interesting, especially if you look at it from um, an European or an American approach, is that as Europeans or as Americans, we don't always, unfortunately anymore, we don't always uh, reconnect the styles of music that we are playing to dancing. But if you look at South American cultures, like, for example, the Brazilian for the samba or the bossa nova, um, and then even more to the Cuban or Afro-Cuban rhythm, every time you're playing that sort of rhythms, that sort of styles, you can picture in your mind again that together with that kind of music, you've got some sort of dance going on. Okay, and this is so beautiful because you really understand the connection between the dancing moves and what the guitar is doing and everything you're, you're playing with the guitar should make people move, should make people dance, okay? Now, uh, I'll show you one last example and then we're gonna wrap it up for tonight's live stream. So I'm gonna do this again on another chord. We did that on the A, let's do it now on a G, okay? And I'm gonna do a pretty much a similar example, you know, with a G here where um, I'm now playing the ninth here. Then I'll make it a G sharp five. Okay, this is still a G at nine, but with a sharp five here. Then a G six nine. Okay, and then back to the sharp five. Okay, so I'm moving chromatically going up instead of doing what we did before on the A, which I was moving down and up. Um, so if I do this in a more samba way, I'll show you slowly first. Here there are a lot of anticipations, but I'm not moving the bass note because it's on the sixth string, so I don't have another one to go on top to play around with the fifth. I'll play it a little quicker. Oops, uh, position of the microphone is not great. I'll change it for the next live stream. So. Make sure, again, that once you're familiar with it and you are comfortable with it, you try it quicker. Okay, that was another example of a more samba rhythm that you can try. So guys, there is so much more to say about Brazilian music, obviously, okay? This is more of an introduction, a chart that we can have about them, about the different styles and the cliches of the Brazilian music. But uh, please let me know if this is a style that interests you. And if you'd like me to do more of these videos, both live and proper videos that I upload on the channel about Brazilian guitar, okay? I can show you more pieces or I can show you more styles or simply more grooves, like simple grooves on one or maybe two chords, where you can noodle around and practice the different uh, cliches of the Brazilian music. But above all, make sure that you listen to a lot of this music, okay? You want to find Brazilian artists that you can follow from the past to really understand the history of this style, uh, Bossa Nova, and the history of the popular tradition of uh, Brazilian music, so more into samba, we also named the choro, uh, the partido alto, and all of these kind of other styles, okay? Right, so um, what's next? Tomorrow I will be back with my live streams on uh, Instagram, so if you don't follow me on Instagram yet, make sure you do, I will add a link in the description here below later on, uh, so if you're watching the recording, you should find it already. Um, as I said, I'm trying to do as many live streams as I can to keep people entertained now that we are all forced to be home. But hopefully uh, you're all doing fine and you are staying safe at home. Okay. Right, guys, let me know if you have more questions. Feel free to write me um, on Instagram, for example, or if you want to leave a comment here below, here below and I will get 
back to you as soon as possible, right? You enjoy the rest of your evening and stay safe and I will see you soon for the next live stream. Bye.